Welcome back to the Keep On Coding channel. My name is Sam and I'm your host and captain for today. Well, today for me and the future for you. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys some tips and advice if you're just starting to code. Things like, where do I start? What language do I learn? Is it too late to start? And should I get a degree or should I go the bootcamp route? It's been a while since I've done one of these videos and well, I missed you guys. How have you been? I've been doing great. I just spent the last two months in Asia living my best life, but now I'm back. Although this video is meant for people who are just starting out, if you are an experienced programmer, leave a comment, share your thoughts, and since we all read the comments, you'll probably end up helping someone who's starting out. When I started to learn how to code 10 years ago, things were much simpler. Coding, boot camps weren't really a thing. Most jobs still had a degree requirement. So your options were teach yourself and try and network your way into a job or contract or freelance work or go to school, get a bachelor's or graduate degree. The first thing you need to figure out is, do you actually like coding? Is this something that you want to do every day for the rest of your life, at least the rest of your working life? And I know it's fun to visit those salary websites to see that you can make $200,000 as an entry-level engineer at Facebook, but honestly, in order to get to that skill level, and I, I know it says entry level, but it's extremely competitive and difficult to land a job like that. Most likely, this is something you're gonna be doing for a while, really not making any money and probably paying money initially. Like me, for example, I started learning to code in 2013 and I didn't see a single dollar until my internship over three years later. And that was just a three month thing. I didn't actually start making like a salary until four years after I started to code. Another thing I've heard people say is I wanna get into coding because I don't wanna really interact with people. Honestly, those days of just clocking in and sitting on your computer all day then going home are long gone. Most companies use what's called an agile methodology, which requires you to interact with multiple people. Like you'll have a scrum master, a product manager, QA engineer, your manager, your other people on your team. You'll have to talk to people who are non-technical and explain them technical things. It's very much an interactive environment and it's become more of a social career. Now it's nothing like sales or marketing, but it has become much more of a collaborative environment. So my advice is if you're starting out, just pick a language and start to try and learn the ins and outs of it. If you're brand new and you don't have like a specific field or specialty that you wanna go into, start with Python. It's probably the most versatile language and it translates well if you're learning other languages. If you know you wanna work on websites or specifically front-end development, learn JavaScript because that's the most popular language in the world and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. In terms of where to start, start on YouTube. It's free, it has really good resources. When I started, there was pretty much only one good channel, The New Boston, which had solid coding tutorials, but now there are dozens. My favorite ones are Free Code Camp, Traversy Media, and Web Dev Simplified, but I'm sure there are many other ones. You could also buy a course. Most of them don't break the bank, like my Java course, which takes you from not knowing how to code to a proficient Java developer. Link in the description. Not a shameless plug. Yeah, it, it is. Other websites that are good for paid tutorials are Udemy and Pluralsight. When I started out, I thought that I could just learn a language like Python and voila, I was a software engineer and companies were gonna be fighting to hire me. And that's just not really the case. Most companies will have a checklist of things that they're looking for. Things like knowledge of a specific framework, something like React or knowledge of databases or theoretical knowledge of algorithms. But when you're starting out, don't worry about that, that'll come later. So that leads us to the question, should you enroll in a bootcamp? Most of these are about three months long and they're usually around 15 to $20,000. You hear many success stories of people who do like a three month bootcamp and they land a role as an engineer at Uber. But this is mostly survivor bias. You only, you hear about the success stories. I've talked to multiple people that went through an entire bootcamp, paid the money and never got a job. I'm not really surprised. It also depends a lot on the job market. Like let's say, you know, in 2021, basically if you could write like a hello world program, you could get hired. I mean, maybe not that drastic, but things are much more different now, especially with all the recent tech layoffs. There are less jobs out there and you're also competing with all these other people that were let go who have skill and experience. I've personally been dabbling with applying to jobs just to kind of see what the market is like. And even, I have a master's degree in computer science. I have five years of experience and I've been getting rejection after rejection after rejection. And this is just to get an interview. I'm not even talking about getting an interview and getting a job. 
I haven't even gotten to the first step. So I can only imagine what it's like trying to apply with no experience and just a boot camp under my belt. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's rough out there. I was looking on LinkedIn and I saw a job post for Figma that had over 1600 applicants for one role. I mean, think about that. 1600 people going for one job. I mean, it's insane. So the second option is, should you go to a degree? And I think this is the best time to get a degree while the market is bad. For me personally, I went, I did my undergrad in 2008. And if you remember, that was the time of the great financial crisis and no one was hiring, especially, you know, me, I had no experience. So I went to school for a few years, graduated in 2011. And by that time, the markets had recovered. But I understand it's not for everybody. I don't recommend it if you have dependents because it's usually going to be like a full-time thing. But if you're younger, so you're going to college anyways. I think computer science is the best major still. Uh, honestly, there's so many like garbage majors out there, especially in the US. We offer like super random majors like like EDM. Like why is electronic dance music a major at a college? Like why would you waste your time and money doing that? <laughs> also, being a student gives you the opportunity to land internships, which is really the best way to get your foot in the door and potentially land you a full-time role when you graduate. The downside of a degree is it takes a while. It's, it can be expensive and you just have to take so many classes that probably won't apply to a developer job. Even within like the computer science realm, if you have to, it's very math heavy. Like I had to take like probability and linear algebra, things that I've really never used. Theoretical stuff like Turing machines and obscure algorithms. And there are things that are cool to know, but probably not necessary. For most jobs. Finally, there's the self-taught route. I can't really speak too much on this because I'm not self-taught, but this is probably the cheapest route, but it's also the less straight path. Is there a better way to say that? Basically, it's the hardest way to get your foot in the door. And you'll probably initially have to start off making less money. Maybe you have to start out with a contract role. Maybe you'll have to find someone you know and get a referral. So this one, there's a lot of different paths you can take with this one. And there are a lot of other YouTubers that are self-taught that talk about their experience. So I highly recommend you check those out. So I hope you found this video insightful, educational, and helpful. I could ask some deep question to leave in the comments, but I know I'll get way more engagement if I just ask you guys to leave your favorite emoji. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.